upper upper for smaller that is missing missing. Okay. missing obviously missing for a long time maybe six months or a year nice healing from a width per perspective a little bit of tooth rotation and closure of the space but it's pretty hefty space so you can use a virtual wax up when you do a, a we, were not, we don't have any nerve tracing here but you can do a virtual virtual wax up with the software which is really nice a really nice feature okay all you need to do is align the arch or trace the arch something like that okay and just pick the tooth number number three and it'll throw in a tooth. Right. I don't think it's the right position. Right. So what do you think? You uh, kind of, kind, pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. So impacted. all, all impacted. <laughs> yeah, super numerous. So do it later. You just align it. That goes down here. That goes down here. It's what I call a quick wax up. Quick wax up. Move it in between, make it a bit smaller, palatally, so you get a, a reasonable occlusal table. I'm not going to go by the smaller, I'm just going to go by the premolar. Look at it from the side, you get a quick wax up. I think that's mm -hmm. very reasonable. Yeah. Reasonable, right? How it took like 10 seconds. Okay, and I'm not into speed. But because this patient had is having some lower implants, these models went to a lab anyhow for a wax up. So you know what? They 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 get they, they I think they put a denture tooth in there. Which is pretty close. Mm -hmm. Okay, that came from the lab. Let's mm -hmm. see. So I think what we did actually is pretty close. Let's see if we can. What do you think? It's, it's kind of the same. Yeah. Kind of the same. same yeah. yeah, the same. So this one was free. The other one was like thirty bucks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's you know I think I think it's a uh, it's nice to illustrate it. Okay. So now all we need to do is go in. Actually, you can see it better here, how the two align mm -hmm. in the cross section. The gray is what you did. The gray, no, the gray is the wax, wax up. up. The okay. yellow is me. So technically, okay. I could make the I could make the crown. I could make the crown a, wider a bit wider way. if I wanted to, a bit. So. pretty close. It does make a big difference. Right. Okay. But what's important now is to whether we use the this wax app or the virtual is to throw in there and throw an implant in there. Okay, so I, I need to pick the right section. Like which is the section here. And then I'll plan an implant. And I'll ignore the sinus at the moment. So I'll place an implant in here. Okay, and let's put in a wide one. This is number three. It's a conical connection by five by eight. And then we prick an abutment, a fake abutment, just to show me the square axis and the trajectory of the implant. And the axis hole is still going to be the same. It's going to be about three and 50 millimeters in height. Now we got a trajectory. Okay, so now, first of all, we save it. Now we can tell not a good position, right? So immediately, I don't have to waste much time. I can immediately tilt this implant more to the buckle or move it bodily if I can. Okay, so we can start seeing what are the restorative implications of what I did. And this obviously is not finalized yet. Right. Okay. So I'll, I'll look, and we may not need to do a big sinus lift here. So I'll now pick a cross section that rotates around the axis of the implant. And I'll start with mesiodistal. Okay. And I'll, I wanted to see the outlines of the teeth, the contours of the teeth. So I'm not going to align myself so much compared to the 
the second molar because it's a bit tilted. Actually, they're both converging. So the best way to plan is to make the trajectory of the implant parallel, not to the roots, but to the contact areas. To the contact areas, because this way you get the best, mm -hmm. uh, let's call it, uh, path, path, of ins path of insertion and also the most ideal uh, contact areas and embrasure mm -hmm. spaces. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you saw the video series on yeah, what's the best that. positioning. Yeah, that was that was uh, speaking of controversy. Co controversy. Okay. So now let's start tweaking. Okay. Let's look at the wax up. So we a bit a bit too palatal and a bit too mesial. Okay, so let's move it bodily to the distal. Bodily to the distal, maybe tilt a little bit. Too much. And buckling, well, let's see what we can do here. How much bone we have to the buckle here? We are short of two millimeters, but that, I think that restoratively that would be Mm -hmm. That would be the best position. What do you think? By the way, if you don't agree, you tell me. I, my, my, my plan is not always perfect, as you know. But what do you think restoratively? No, it looks good. I, not too distal? I always like to have it in the, in the, as central as we can put the screw. Mm -hmm. As central as we can. Okay, so the, the two ways to do it, to make it more, move the screw axis. There's a way to move the implant bodily. Right, and there's a way to tilt, tilt it, it right. and I think there has to be a balance between the two. Okay, and I, I, you, okay. I guess you have to decide how comfortable you are with how much buckle bone you have. Exactly, that's really a determining factor. So exactly, if I don't have enough buckle bone, I'll I'll move it bodily to the palatal, and I'll tilt it. Okay. I mean, this this planning is almost done. Maybe I don't need to do a sinus lift, but in essence, that's pretty much. So with this Pretty lift, much. would you do an internal lift? Internal, yeah. absolutely, absolutely internal. Okay, so it looks a bit too close to to the to the molar. You know what could be the problem? The problem could be when we have our guided case. There could be a problem with the ring, with the little tube through which we we, we do the osteotomy. Okay, we can measure. Uh, we have we have plenty of space. You know, to be on the safe side, I would move it a little bit to the to the mesial. I'm going to move it a bit to the mesial. I don't feel comfortable with this position. Let's see what it did restoratively. I it think it's <laughs> still okay. Okay, so I think we're okay. And then I'll have to do a little sinus lift here. I can always go eight by five. So I know that this is going to be pretty straightforward. Now, if we look at the 3D Summers technique, Summers technique, that? classic Summers technique, you know. Not you too know, much he, depth. He taught that technique to us before he published it. Oh, really? In 92? I used to refer to him. Really? Yeah. He's just not that far away. Mm -hmm. just, uh, it, was he a periodontist? He is a periodontist. Periodist. He still works. He still practices. Yeah. Wow. Famous but he doesn't work that much anymore. Must be on the old side. Uh, here's the He's probably in his mid-70s 70s? now. I thought so. So this is the basic... Great guy. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure. I'm sure. I would love to meet Smart him. Smart guy. Okay. David, I think this is pretty much it. What do you think? Should it looks move, really good. Should yeah. we move it more buckly? I'm sorry, mesially? For, for us to, to, be, to be, to, hurt, to be but, more aesthetic, but I, I, but we, we're losing really. some we're losing some bone. You see the mesial distally. You see, the more we move it mesial, the bigger the sinus yeah. lift we need to make. Right. That's why I was kind of comfortable there. Plus, if you go eight, it ain't no mirror implant. Less. But I think we're pretty good, so we are ready to order a guide. Yeah. 
That looks good. Looks okay? Yeah. Okay.